near Puno on Lake Titicaca, about 3,800 meters above sea level, we find the Uros, a pre-Incan people who live on self-fashioned islands. Yeah, they really live on islands that they create by themselves. The reasons behind this floating lifestyle started about 200 years before the Spaniards arrived. They escaped from the Incas' threat of enslavement and taxation. Escapan con su embarcación dentro de los totorales, esperando a que los Incas se vayan. Pero los Incas no se iban, estaban todo el tiempo ahí. Entonces ellos se dan la imaginación de cómo podían quedarse a vivir ahí. Gracias a ese río ellos viven aquí, porque consumen agua de ese río. In the Inca language, Uru means rebel. The rebel still remains here today. Their traditional lifestyle is now jeopardized by massive tourism. It does provide financial opportunities, but the added traffic requires the Uros to work extremely hard to maintain everything afloat. The bottom of the islands rot away fairly quickly, so new reeds are added to the top every three months. Las casitas son móviles. Se levanta, se pone también otra capa y se vuelve. The amount of people on each island vary from two to ten families. If any quarrel or disputes on the island, they saw it in two, and off we float. <laughs> El Mercedes Benz se moderniza ahora, amiga. Con el sintético adentro en los cuerpos tiene botellas de plástico. Es modernizado. The reed is the main element of their subsistence. With this plant they make boats, houses, roofs, arts and crafts. And of course they honor it with some songs. Another name for this multifunctional plant is the Titicaca banana. They eat the white bottom as food. It's not only highly nutritious, it relieves pain and cures a hangover. And to top it off, they use the flower to drink their afternoon tea. They hunt birds, fish, and graze cattle, and trade totora reeds on the mainland for other products that they might need. The sense of community is strong. One day, one family cooks for everyone, and they rotate. They suffered big losses due to fires. As a result, they now power their appliances from solar energy. We find a restaurant, a hotel, mini market and a trout hatchery. They have a school and even their own radio station, church and medical attention. A hospitable, colorful tribe contributing to a rich and diverse culture. <laughs>